scared of death. My heart races. I am alive. Now, lots of people have been telling me that you can't really play a wand build without an insane budget. I've gotten quite a few people coming into Discord and making videos and such about wanders in general being very expensive. And as of the release of this video, I kind of have to disagree. But of course, we'll see what happens with the market once people see this video. Now, this is a clip from my stream of me doing an 80% delirious map with multiple damage mods, double beyond, and absolutely full juice. Scarabs, Sextants, all that kind of good stuff. It also has 4,500 plus Affliction Dust, with the majority being the most dangerous dust for this build, which is the blue crit one. And this character that you're seeing only has 15 to 20 divines worth of gear equipped. But of course, that will probably change after this video goes live. Now, when I originally set out with playing this character, my first thought was, the community as a whole has been pouring endless time and effort into maximizing the potential of Deadeye based elemental bow builds and has figured out a ton of ways to make them efficient, high damage, and even tanky sometimes. And wands effectively work like one-handed bows, so why can't we just scale them the same exact way while adding in a few wand-specific modifiers? This is my attempt at exactly that. Now if you're new to the channel, make sure that you subscribe and without further ado, let's get into it. So this is my character, screen, cancer, yep. Level 96 Deadeye, you might have seen this character from my previous video and such, but uh, we have leveled up a decent amount. And I do want to give a forewarning before any of you try to play this build, please understand and be aware of the fact that this build will make your computer cry. It will set it on fire if it has lower specs. In the footage that you saw previously, sometimes when there's like a really large amount of enemies on screen or I'm fighting like one super tanky enemy and those projectiles just bleach the screen, I'm getting down to like five FPS. I have a 24 core Ryzen processor and a 3070. So if your computer is worse than that, maybe be a little bit cautious before you play this build. That being said, that's in Super Juice Delirium maps, and I know a lot of you probably won't ever even be doing that kind of map. So if you're not going to be doing that tier of juiced map, you might still be okay. So let's talk a bit about this skill, which is Kinetic Bolt of Fragmentation. Now, I've seen people play this a couple different ways, and initially when I first started playing the ability, I thought to myself, well, this looks pretty good for single target, and you know, there were like videos that popped up on Reddit of showing all kinds of hits. I even did some testing myself, but I tried to make it work as a clear ability as well. And while I do think it is possible, you can invest more money in gems than I have in my entire build if you want to try to get it working for clear as well as single target. Honestly, in my opinion, it just seems a lot easier to swap in Kinetic Blast instead and just have a double four link in your pair of Thunder Fists. And that's what you saw in that like 80% Delirious map footage is just me on two four links in Thunder Fist, right? Like I just have Kinetic Bolt and Kinetic Blast linked with Volatility, Returning Projectiles and level 30 added lightning damage. That's it. And then when you're trying to fight like Ubers or things like that, you just swap the Kinetic Blast out because you don't really need it. This seemed way easier than, than trying to deal with like awakened fork or awakened chain or anything else like that that just seemed like an absurd amount of money to spend 
when I can just swap one gem for doing Ubers. But quickly showing off these two skills, let's start with Kinetic Blast. So the whole idea behind Kinetic Blast is that this is just an absolutely immense clear skill. This is the skill that you've been seeing people in like five way carries use for the last, I don't know how many leagues. When there's a lot of enemies on screen, this essentially just overlaps like 10, 20, 30 projectiles at any given time and does a pretty insane amount of clear damage. However, it doesn't do the most single target damage. So since we do have just both of our abilities in a four link, you can just walk up to something and hit it with Kinetic Blast whenever, you know, you need something that does serious single target. Now, you saw that giant explosion of projectiles on the screen, right? I, I know that looks pretty insane, so let me try to explain what's going on there. Kinetic Bolt has a very specific line on it that says multiples of these projectiles can hit the same target. And the whole idea behind this is that this allows you to shotgun, essentially. This is something that's not normally available in PoE. They removed shotgunning years and years and years ago because it was just kind of overpowered. And this is no different. It is quite overpowered. Now they've tried to balance this out a little bit with the effectiveness of added damage and the attack damage of the base ability being 85. That's really, really low. So the whole idea here is that since we are using returning projectiles, you might've noticed that those projectiles went out and then came back in. So the intuitive way that you would think to scale this is that, well, if I have like 10 projectiles, that means I'll hit like 10 times, like all these projectiles will hit, right? And then if those return, I'll hit another 10 times, right? And that's like 20 hits, that's good but there is this one ability that is quite broken in Path of Exile right now, which I'm surprised this still hasn't been nerfed at this point, but Sniper's Mark and returning projectiles make it so that projectiles will split from a target and then all of those split projectiles come back directly to where the attack initially happened. This is what's causing that giant explosion of projectiles on your screen. This is some of the same tech that you have seen in like the splitting steel videos that I made a league or two ago that you've seen people playing on like Rue's version of splitting steel this league and the late portion of last league. Sniper's Mark, just kind of a broken ability if I'm gonna be honest with you. This allows us in my current setup for bossing to hit anywhere from 110 to 120 times per attack. That's an absolutely absurd amount of projectiles. And what this allows us to do is scale our damage extremely efficiently. Now, there's another feature of Kinetic Bolt that I haven't talked about yet, and that's increases and reductions of spell damage also applied to attack damage from this skill at 250% of their value. Now, I'll talk about gear in a little bit, but essentially what this means is that you are able to scale spell damage as a like huge giant percentage damage multiplier for this skill. That's the reason why like our wand has crafted spell damage on it and we're using something like Wrathpith Globe. These items give us super large amounts of spell damage, which if we have a hundred spell damage, that's scaling the damage of this ability by 250% of that. It's an insane amount of damage. But then you might be saying, well, you know, Kinetic Blast doesn't have that, so why are you using Kinetic Blast? That doesn't let you scale the same amount of damage. Well, since we do go up to the top portion of the tree and we get both of these wand nodes here, you'll notice that there is a wand mastery that says increases and reductions to spell damage also apply to attacks while wielding a wand. So this makes it so that we can use Kinetic Blast as our clear ability and scale all of that spell damage with it perfectly fine. This ends up with a super efficient character that can do extremely good clear, extremely good single target, all at the same time, which is essentially perfect for current affliction map juicing, because not only do you need to be able to clear hundreds of mobs at a given time, you need to be able to fight like Godzilla tier bosses that are going to be showing up 40 to 50 times in every single map that have more effective health pool than an uber boss. So yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty necessary that you can do some good single target this league. So that's our main ability. Let's talk about our other abilities real quick. Now, before we do that, I do want to mention that I am a Warden of the Magi. And typically in this league, I think that Warden of the Magi is almost always the wrong choice. I think that if I remember the numbers from Pee Wee Ninja, it's like 80 plus percent of people are playing Primalist, right? As they should. However, this build in particular can make extremely good use of tinctures. And there's two reasons for that. So the main one is the fact that we are able to have essentially permanent berserk on single target. When I say permanent, I mean, I've gone as long as 25 seconds of 50 rage and berserk up at the same time but no enemies have survived longer than that at this point, so I can't really tell you how long it would last. So 
it's an absolutely absurd amount of rage that you can get. And that's all thanks to a tincture that just says 14% chance to gain one rage when you hit a rare or unique enemy. Most sources of rage in this game are capped in how often you can apply them. This one is not capped. This is just 14% chance on every single attack. And guess what? We hit 110 plus times every single time we attack. So you can imagine when we have like Berserk going and Haste going and all of our attack speed and we're hitting 110 times per attack, like seven to 10 times per second, it's a lot of rage. So this allows us to essentially have permanent Berserk anytime we're fighting a rare or unique enemy. On top of that, we are using Sigil of Power. Now, Sigil of Power is absurdly broken for this ability. The idea behind Sigil of Power is that you have to spend a certain amount of mana and this scales stages and causes you to gain additional added lightning damage. If we look at the ability here, you'll see that it's granting 8 to 153 added lightning damage per stage, and it can have four total stages. So you're basically getting like 40 to, I don't know, 600 added lightning damage when this thing is like max stacked. And you'll see that it says you have to spend a total of 461 mana per stage to be able to stack it. Well, it turns out that when you are using a full four link of this, it's like 30 mana. You're attacking seven to 10 times per second. It's pretty easy after like six or seven seconds to be at full stages. And most of the time enemies are dying at around two or three stages anyways, but an absolutely absurd amount of damage. And if you're in something like a super juice map with a bunch of enemies and stuff in it, you can pop this thing down and just kind of stand in the middle of it, attacking enemies from range, and you will get to four stacks. And then once the enemies come and stand in this zone, attacking you while you're at four stacks, they'll be doing 20% less damage to you. So really strong ability for this build absolutely excellent we have it linked with increased duration so it lasts 20 seconds meaning that in those circumstances you can get to four stacks no problem for our movement skills we're using shield charge as well as frost blink we have a couple of auras precision pretty obvious accuracy and crit are both good for us purity of elements we need a lot of resists and it's kind of hard to get them on this build also makes us immune to elemental ailments Grace and Dread Banner both make it so that we have more chance to evade enemy attacks. And now let's talk about these specters. So you might be wondering, what are these specters here and why would you have specters on this build? Well, specters are really broken this league. And in particular, these perfect dark marionettes are insanely broken. The reason for this is that we are using a thing called Guardian's Blessing. Guardian's Blessing allows you to have an aura on you and it causes them to take 14.3 of their maximum life and energy shield as physical damage per second while you have that aura on you interesting thing though about these perfect dark marionettes is that if we watch for a moment you'll see that they will eventually die to you know their their thing there but you'll see that they respawn immediately now these are unique specters that you can only get from the warlock in the affliction mist they sell these and the idea behind them is they respawn immediately after death and when you get the perfect dark marionettes, they cause an explosion that deals a scorch to enemies. Now, most of the time, since we do have such good um, defensive auras, these don't really die that frequently. And a lot of the time their deaths will get decent. And what that ends up causing is that one of them will die, immediately respawn, and then the other one will die and immediately respawn. Meaning that the aura just kind of stays on you forever. So this allows us to use our energy shield for our life bar, makes it so that we get essentially another free aura for only three links here. And it does get us some scorch occasionally, which is pretty good. So let's talk a little bit about our gear. Now let's first start with the wand because this is probably one of the most important pieces of gear on the entire character. You can use quite a few different things at the initial version of this character i was using a piscator as you can see it in my offhand there but um i guess i can mention this as well with the specters if you do happen to swap out the gym they will die right and these aren't specters that you can desecrate you have to buy them every time however because of the way that the perfect dark marionettes work if they do you know like you swap something in your hideout and they fall on the ground you can just respawn them again and there we go i've got both of my specters back do suggest that you uh, take it off of your bar though beyond that so that you don't randomly specter some mob in a map and lose your like 15 20 chaos each specters but you can see i've got piscators in my offhand and then i have this crafted wand this will most likely not be available to you the problem is that i'm using a tier one fractured lightning damage wand and these are not going to be available however you can get a tier five a tier four or a tier three relatively easily and it's like a 10 percent overall damage loss for the build i can say without a doubt this is the one item that will go up in cost these fractured mods will absolutely go up in cost 
That being said, you can lose 15% out of your 150 million damage if you want to and not even have a fracture on your wand whatsoever. You can go for any elemental added damage fracture and be perfectly fine. It will You will have no issue. So this wand is kind of unobtainium, but a very similar wand is not. There are notes on how to craft this wand in the POB. Make sure that you go check those out. It's a very straightforward craft. You basically just essence either attack speed or crit chance until you get the other one and then you multi-mod it if it's got some extra prefixes you can use like a suffixes can't be changed and scour to get those off of there but overall the base for like a tier 5 wand right now is like 5 chaos for like a tier 3 i think it's like 80 chaos or something like that and then at most it's probably five div to craft this wand this is probably the most expensive piece of gear on the entire character but it is relatively important and if you want to scale your damage this is the item that you spend money on the rest of the gear on this character is actually relatively cheap so we are using wrathpith globe um i personally bought the six percent of physical damage taken as fire for like 75 chaos most likely this will go up in price a little bit but you can get a normal one you can try to corrupt one yourself or you can just spring for the extra physical damage taken as fire but this item gives us some spell block it gives us some energy shield some life and notably it gives us that five percent increased spell damage per 100 player maximum life you might notice that i'm not really scaling life on this build this is still the best shield i checked a almost perfect crafted rare shield and as far as I can tell, I could not find anything that was better than this shield, especially one that has a corruption on it. So if you can figure something out, by all means, let me know and I will update the POB. But I couldn't find anything reasonable that was better than this, even with only like 3,500 to 4,000 life. Spell damage is just simply that good. Another thing that you might be worried about is the sacrifice 10% of your life when you use or trigger a spell skill. Well, we use an attack and uh, it doesn't proc it. The only thing that procs it is if we cast our aura or like berserk or something like that or our other stuff, but we leech an insane amount. So it doesn't really matter most of the time. You might notice we don't have a helmet on. This is particularly because we are using dance with death. Makes it so that you cannot use a helmet, but it gives you lucky crit strike chance and damage with critical strikes is lucky. This is what makes lightning damage so good. However, it does make enemies damage with critical strikes against you is lucky now normally i just don't do anything about this i just deal with the fact that i'm gonna die every once in a while you can however use a crit mastery and get that line that says you take 30 percent reduced extra damage from critical strikes that will help quite a bit with that however you can just pop on whatever helmet you want so that you can put gems in it um you can't use any of the stats on it and notably you cannot make use of this node this oath of the magi where it says 50 percent to all elemental resistances if you have an equipped helmet with no socketed gems this is not equipped it does not work. I wish it did. This build would be quite literally two to three times stronger if it did work, but it doesn't work. Next is going to be Marilene's Fallacy. We have lucky crit strike chance. That means that even with this 40% less critical strike chance, we still have like anywhere from 70 to 80% chance to crit. Uh, this amulet is half of the build's damage. That's not an exaggeration in, in any matter. It's like 40 to 50% of the overall damage of the build. Huge amount of damage. You don't need the attack speed implicit. Honestly, for most people, just having a normal non-corrupted one with intelligence on it is going to be better because you might be pressed a little bit for intelligence. So I highly suggest that you, you don't need the 9% attack speed. It's like 3% damage. I, I just went with it because I kind of wanted to before inevitably people buy all of these amulets and corrupt them and take all the attack speed, all the crit, all the everything out of the market. I wanted one for myself. Next is the chest. This is a tier three chance to suppress spell damage chest. You could also go for an evasion energy shield chest if you wanted to. 16% um, chance to suppress spell damage is almost nothing. That fracture is super cheap. It's tier three. Beyond that, you use chaos res essences until you get a tier one of whatever elemental resist you want. And then from there, you can use Eldritch Currency to get some prefixes and craft physical damage from hits taken as fire and lightning damage. The implicits. I would always go for the non-curse aura from skills. However, if you're having difficulty with resistances, you can get purity of element effect. If you're not having difficulty with resistances, I suggest getting grace effect to give you just a little bit better buffer on your evasion. Next is the rings. Um, there's two separate kind of rings that you can use for this build. These are strength essence crafted fractured amethyst rings. These could go up in price but i kind of doubt that just like random resist chaos rings are going to go significantly up in price over what they already were but you just basically go for as good of resist that you can get and as good of life as you can get on these you do need the strength to be able to use like berserk and all those abilities though now this ring might be difficult to get Ignore the damage taken recouped as life. It's just a lucky mod that I got, and it's not that relevant. The main line is that gain 19 life with hits per enemy attacked. 
this modifier might be hard to get on a ring with lots of resistances and lots of strength. You might notice I don't even have strength on here. I just took like 30 strength nodes on the tree. But the whole idea is that if you can't get this ring, you do have to take these nodes on the tree. These three right here. These nodes will make it so that your survivability will go from like pretty good to you basically never die unless you like tank a bunch of uber attacks or have like 30 rare mobs beating you essentially in like a big juice map. The amount of sustain that you get from life gain on hit with attacks when you're attacking 110 times per attack is absurd. It's absolutely insane. So if you can't get this ring, get those nodes on the tree. You might have to drop a little bit of damage for it, but it is what it is. Thunder Fist, this is like 30 chaos right now. It is our main link for the build. It gives you some evasion and energy shield. 100% increased effect of lightning ailments means that we can get to like 30 to 33% uh, shock effect even on uber bosses. Overall, really good gloves. Um, they work extremely well for this build. Added lightning damage is really powerful. So we slot both of our abilities in here, kinetic blast and kinetic bolt. We have a pretty good time. We are using darkness and Throned. The main reason that I'm using Darkness and Throned is because Abyss Jewels are insane for this build. These aren't even that insane. Ignore the chance to avoid being shocked because it doesn't do anything for me. But like, all of these mods are essentially getting doubled, right? So you're getting a bunch of added damage with wands. You're getting attack speed if you've dealt a crit recently, which is always for us. We've got like corrupting blood immunity on here, some resistances, some damage with wands, global crit strike chance, effect of non-damaging ailments. You can get resistances and life on these if you need them. Like if you just are unable to cap your resistances, you can get some resist and life here. Overall, darkness enthroned, really strong. For people who are wondering, uh, mage blood, headhunter, Almost assuredly, it's Mage Blood. Um, Mage Blood's just an absolutely absurdly broken belt. Um, you're only really gonna get to use three flasks with the Mage Blood, so you could just buy a three flask Mage Blood if you wanted to, because you are going to want to use a Tincture and you are going to want to use Dying Sun. I'll talk about that in a minute. But you could cover all of your resistances, a bunch of crit, uh, all of your movement speed, all that kind of good stuff with those three flasks would be pretty solid. Then we've got Relic Kesh. Um, these are like a divine and a half right now, might go up slightly from this, but these are already insanely popular. This is making it so that we don't need to worry about investing points into getting like frenzy charges, power charges, or endurance charges. Endurance charges in particular are actually pretty hard to get on this build. This makes it so that we just count as having all of those at all times. Really solid, gives us some fizz damage reduction. Move speed, cold resist, and chaos res, all pretty good. You could get a corrupted pair of these if you wanted to get like plus two duration gems for sigil of power, would probably be pretty good. For the flasks, um, we are using a quicksilver, a diamond, and a jade flask for mapping, but we use a life flask for bossing. These notably do have increased effect and reduced duration. We are using a node on the tree that allows us to... Uh, get essentially infinite blast charges whenever we're clearing so this is more than fine most bosses don't really last longer than like five to seven seconds most of the time so the duration is mostly fine but these are pretty typical mods uh crit evasion attack speed all pretty good um, i talked about the tincture already this just gives us a bunch of rage all damage can freeze is actually pretty important for clearing maps this makes your survivability quite a bit better we also do have some onslaught on kill you can get whatever suffix you can afford if you can afford something like steel enemy modifiers on kill or if you can afford something like explodey or things like that those are probably fine as well i just went with onslaught so i can move even faster and then we have dying sun so dying sun is interesting here because we do manage to get 50 percent increased flask effect we get that from both our ascendancy as well as natural remedies giving us 10 and then this is giving us 30 because it's next to our tincture. And then we have these two nodes, which are giving us 10 as well. That ends up with 50, meaning it should be giving us an additional projectile. The difference in damage on single target with this is pretty massive. I do suggest you put used when you hit a rare unique enemy, if not already in effect, because this flask doesn't fill as quickly as the other ones. Pretty important. And then the life flask. Most of the time, I would suggest that you probably use the life flask only for bosses. This just makes bossing a lot smoother. Um, one particular boss, which is going to be the Eater of Worlds, is really difficult for this build because he attacks so many times at once that it kind of overwhelms our evasion. What I would suggest for that build is you probably drop the Quicksilver Flask maybe and use this Jade Flask instead just so that you can like survive his amount of attacks. You really need more evasion for that, which is pretty important. Now, talking about the jewels that we're using, we are using a Brutal Restraint of Aceneth. This is the jewel that gives us Dance with Death. It does give us a bunch of like dexterity and stuff. Um, I actually don't have like almost any good mods on this because I don't have a lot of nodes circled here. Um, we've got like 5% global accuracy, movement speed, and flash charges gained. Ideally, you would probably go for like 
aura effect or things like that if you're looking for like a really good one. The main reason that we use it here instead of using it here, which you would think there's like so many more nodes that I'm going to be able to hit in this area, right? Well, unfortunately, if you use it here, it makes it so that you can't take Wind Dancer. And Wind Dancer is actually really, really powerful for builds that have super high evasion. This node is actually the reason why Eater of Worlds can be kind of difficult. Because he can hit you so many times, he can hit you over 20 times very, very quickly, which means that you're taking 20% more attack damage. Everywhere else, this is a super huge bonus. Because we have 95% evasion most of the time, that is 20 attacks. Every 20 attacks we're getting hit. And most of the time, you're not getting hit 20 times in the course of four seconds. So Wind Dancer is just a huge upgrade. Other than that, we are using a Watcher's Eye. Um, I'm not even using the Wrath Aura right now. You could get whatever you like here. The main thing that matters here is just chance to evade attack hits while affected by Grace. You want more than this. Um, five is just what I bought because I was messing with Wrath previously. Um, eight would be much more ideal. Get what you can afford. I do want to talk about that which was taken. The only mod on here that is necessary for bossing and such is the one that says 25% increased effect of your marks. It is important that this says 25%. Now, if I look for this right now, you'll see that a jewel that just has 25% effect of marks is only about one divine at the moment. There is potential for this to get way more expensive, so get it while you can. Um, if you don't end up getting 25% increased effect of marks, it does reduce the amount of projectiles that you're going to have by a decent amount. It is not the end of the world, but it is a pretty decent amount. Now, if you can, you really do need to get like 21% or higher on this. If you get anywhere from 21 to 24%, you can simply leave Mark on Hit in. Mark on Hit's going to reduce it by 16%, which means that you should be able to hit that 80% breakpoint even with this in. You could take it out if you want to as well, but um, for bossing, it does feel nice to be able to leave this in. If you are able to afford the 25% increased effect of your mark specifically, you will want to take out mark on hit support because you're going to get essentially like an additional 10 projectile hits. Now, I'm currently in the bossing setup of the POB. When you do the mapping version of the POB, you will use inspired learning and you will put that inspired learning here. There's a separate POB setup for the mapping setup. You'll move like these points over here into this section right here. You'll take this power charge node, you'll take this frenzy charge node, and then that will enable that jewel. It's very important for mapping. Inspired Learning is really, really strong. Right now, Inspired Learning is only like 80 chaos, so you should be getting this. It is a very powerful effect for this build. Now, as I said previously, there are two different POBs that are going to be linked down below. There's going to be a mapping POB as well as a bossing POB. Let's talk about the bossing POB first. So this is the POB that's going to have the full like 152 million DPS that you saw in the actual um, thumbnail. So I do want to talk about how I got to this DPS number real quick. Now, this is explained in the notes. It is one of the frequently asked questions. But as I said previously, the whole idea is that this ability has an amount of projectiles that you're hitting with. Those projectiles go through. And then as each and every single one of those hit, Sniper's Mark causes them to split an amount of times. So the idea is, is that the bossing setup has 10 projectiles with the flask up. That is going to be the Dying Sun Flask. Note that I have this disabled because it like artificially increases the fire resistance and such. So it's the only reason I have this disabled. It doesn't actually like cause the build to do any more damage to have it enabled. And then with 100% mark effect, 75% from our ascendancy, 25 from the jewel, and a level 21 sniper's mark, we get 10 total splits per projectile. So we're hitting 10 times with the initial projectiles, each of those projectiles are splitting 10 times and then returning and hitting. Now, as it says here, technically some of the returning initial projectiles hit as well, but they do this like zigzag thing. So I'm not 100% certain that all of those are hitting. So I've just excluded those 10 projectiles, but this is in perfect circumstances. So this is 110 hits. So if you look at our skill, you'll notice the kinetic bolt of fragmentation has 110 hits. This is what allows us to get this 152 million DPS because we're hitting for 1.39 million for every single hit and we're hitting 110 times per attack and we're attacking like 7.2 times per second. So that's the whole idea behind that. Um, one thing that I do want to note about this tree is that we are taking far shot as well as point blank. This is something that even to this point that I'm at right now, I'm sort of iffy on. I have gone purely on feel here because I can't really tell exactly how far these projectiles are traveling at any given time. If someone can give me like conclusive evidence of this, I would be super happy about it because it seems like in general, when I'm like clearing maps and just fighting things, having both point blank and far shot 
tends to feel a little bit better. If I take out point blank, I notice like some more inconsistency with my damage. However, I suspect that point blank actually is at least slightly lower damage on single target. You can test this out for yourself. If anybody has any conclusive proof, please let me know. I'd like to update these POBs, but I couldn't really reason it out. It just typically felt better to me to have both of them. Feel free to try this on your own, either using point blank or removing it, and let me know how you feel. Other than that, we've got all the typical stuff in a POB. We've got the skills. We do have the item setups. There is a more expensive set of gear, which can bring you closer up to like 185 million. This isn't absurdly more expensive and honestly i don't think most of this is worth it it's essentially just getting like a more expensive crafted one one similar to what i've got um it's got like the implicit corruptions on a couple pieces of the gear these are basically just really minor upgrades you do have a separate tree for these as well bringing you up to like 207 million because with those upgrades you can change a few things on the tree move a couple things around and it will get you like 50 million more DPS, which is substantial. It can be the difference between like phasing a boss and not phasing a boss, but 150 million most of the time on most Ubers is still pretty good. Notably in the configuration for bossing, I have it set to three stages instead of four. You can get up to four, but reasonably you're only ever going to be at three. Technically I was able to get up to like 33 or 34% shock, but I have a jewel that does that. So I moved it down a little bit. I have the projectile travel distance set to 50. I don't exactly know how far these returning projectiles are traveling they might be going 70 or higher but i'm not 100 percent convinced with that because it's really hard to see and i think those projectiles that are going super far are the ones that are returning hitting and piercing through the enemy and then going out into the distance at 50 projectile travel distance the dps would be higher if i put this to 70 we're at 231 million at that point and if i if it is 70 and we are taking out point blank, then it's 264 million, but I'm I'm not 100% convinced that that's the case. Like I said, if you have conclusive proof, let me know. Other than that, everything else in here is pretty straightforward. 50 rage, we always have rage when we're fighting bosses. Have you crit recently? All the good stuff. Now, going back and looking at the mapping POB, this POB is a little bit different. Mainly, as I said, we do have significantly less damage because we are using different gear. This is a clearing setup. We're down a link. We have moved a bunch of our gems and stuff around, so we have inspired learning here. The skill is hitting significantly less times because we don't have that mark effect anymore. We're using mark on hit support. We're not using the it that was taken jewel. So with this setup, the single target will be lower, but 50 plus million is absolutely plenty for killing most random, like even super boosted map affliction mobs. You should be fine. Lastly, I do want to talk about the notes. Um, these aren't as like in-depth as some of my league start POVs, but there is quite a few like FAQs, some information about leveling and some uniques to use, um, how to do the gameplay. I do have crafting notes for all the pieces of gear that you would be crafting. Um, I talk about like flasks, the jewels and what you're supposed to be using on them and all that kind of good stuff. And that is going to be it for the video. If you have further questions or you have difficulty with the build, the best way to get help with this is to join my Discord. It's linked down below. There is a particular thread specified for this build don't pollute the other random general chats and things like that ask in that thread and i will do my best when i have time to answer I do want to give a shout out to my patreons i am going to be posting content on patreon again um particularly like this build the pobs came out early for patrons i posted that sometime last night i will be doing some updates and stuff to the patreon tiers and such and you'll be getting some like behind the scenes videos and stuff going forward for me over there if you want to help support me since i don't really do like very many sponsored deals at least right now um patreon would help me make more content so i appreciate each and every one of you hope you enjoy the build it should be at least for now quite a bit cheaper than the other versions that are out there still with some pretty solid performance and remember boys if you enjoy this content make sure to give this video a like subscribe to youtube channel hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest videos and stay safe out there in ray class and i'll see you guys in the next video